Hello, thank you for joining me. It's minus one degrees today, it's snowing. I'm in Stockholm, I'm surrounded by all these former industrial buildings and um, as it's quite cold, I need somewhere inside to go. And this one in front of me, this is the city's transport museum. Let's go inside and get out the snow and see what they have to see. I've just paid my entrance fee to get in, and here I am. I'm on a metro train. This is one of the older Stockholm metro trains. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a walk around. We're going to see metro trains, trams, and buses, and just like a, you'd expect of any city's transport museum, a bit of everything of their transport, certainly their past transport. Um, we can have a look about possible future transport. It looks really quite certain. So as we walk past here, there's the metro train we have just been sitting inside. If I turn the camera around, this is what we're greeted to. So we've got trams, I think that one there, 401, that's from the transition period from tram to metro. We've got some buses up there, we've got some much older trams, another metro train. I understand the way it went, now I don't know every detail of the history of Stockholm and its public transport, but Sweden drove on the left hand side like we do in the UK until 1967. A year ago, exactly this time a year ago, I was in Oslo and we visited the Transport Museum there and I was confused about why were there right hand drive buses and then somebody pointed out in the comments it's because Sweden used to be right hand drive so it was a Swedish bus. So when, the, when Sweden converted to left hand drive it caused a bit of a problem with some of the tram systems, it meant that various tram systems you know, didn't necessarily work because the, the railways seem to still be on the left but the cars roads are on the right so certain parts of the tram network have survived I've made videos I've been making drivers I or I will there will be drivers I've used on those videos so watch the watch out for those I've managed to make some drivers I've used of some of the tramways and there's some really beautiful tramways here in Stockholm so here we have what I'd call a tram I think this vehicle here this is one from when some of the trams were made so they would go through the tunnels and then it developed into the tunnel van and like um, I might not say that 100% correctly my Swedish is very far from perfect so it would have progressed from trams through to metro. Let's have a look around there see what we can see so here's one of the much older trams see this one here number 14 is electric just see the trolley pole up there and on this side we have various um, various signs. Behind me there's a tunnel. What do we have here? I think we might have found a miniature railway. I think we might have to make a separate video on that. It's funny though, don't often see a tunnel with a metro train above it. Normally the metro train is in the tunnel. But let's now go and have a look around. There's the museum's cafe. I'll definitely go and have perhaps a cup of tea there. Be able to sit there and watch little trains come in and out. That's pretty cool. Let's have a look, see what we can see. So this is the, the sort of the colour of the Stockholm trams. Even today, the modern trams which run in Stockholm are blue like this. We can't actually go inside, but I'm going to put the camera up to the window so you can see. I'll give you an idea. So how... Got, yeah, so there's a driver's cab at that end. Is it one the sort I like? Um, yeah, so it looks as though, well, three sets of folding leaf doors. Uh, yeah, and it looks as though there isn't a driver's cab at this end. So as I do in places like Sofia, I'll stand at the back of my camera and film like a backwards driver's eye views. We have another tram, much older looking tram. Um, is it, I'm sure it's electric or horse. It sort of looks electric to me, it could be horse. Um, yeah, two trams. So one thing I've just noticed, and I don't know if it'll work, but look, there's a ticket barrier here. There's only one other museum I've been to that's had a ticket barrier as part of the display, and that was at the London Bus Museum. I don't know if I can make it open. Yes, it opened. That was so cool. And then it closed again. Let's do that again. That was too fun not to do. Only people like me get excited about ticket barriers. Right, I'm going to put the camera ahead of me this time so you can see it in action. That's what they call the swash swoosh ticket barriers because they sort of go boom, boom, like that. We don't have them in Britain anymore, but I remember there were a few stations 
used to have them. Um, where was it? Portsmouth and South Sea, Southampton Central, Epsom, Chelmsford, possibly Romford. Um, if anyone knows whether there are any other swash swoosh ticket barriers in Britain, please comment and tell me. Ireland had them. Ireland does have them actually. Uh, they're quite common in Europe, but as I say, I think extinct in Britain. It's in the uniforms the staff would have worn. Everywhere you look in this museum, there's you know, old pictures. It's quite nice here. They've actually got like an old tram stop and they've placed it exactly where it would have been in an old photograph. So, you know, it really sort of adds to the atmosphere. Here we have a nice little motor bus. I do enjoy vintage buses. So that's, oh, it's, a, it's a Leyland bus. So, um, and as you can see, right and drive because it dates to the time when Sweden drove on the left so it's probably made in Britain it makes sense if Britain made you know buses for Sweden because if you know we both drove on the same side of the road here is the front of a more modern bus and as you can see by now the buses are left-hand drive as for this um, metro I'm gonna the mini metro deserves a separate video there will be a separate video I'm just gonna tease you a little bit Look at that. Seven and a quarter inch gauge metro here. We are definitely going to have to have a ride on that. I'm not coming here, not riding that. There's another metro train. Can we go in this one, maybe? Not sure. Let's get going. Oh, yeah, we can. Cool. Let's go in. Here we go into. Yes, that's where the driver. All the Yeah, it looks like it's the drivers. It looks as though the driver had to stand up. To drive the train. There's a seat here for the second man, but yeah, still. Let's go out here now. Oh, look, here. Here's like the doors you get at metro stations. I like it when they have, um, you know, exhibits like this you get in there. Now, one thing I will say now, this, this applies to most museums. Things like those doors um, help to explain that. It's a funny thing that comes up in that every now and then. I always say the term train station is incorrect. I always get people saying, no, but it's what trains go to. If you were to, the point is there's always a railway there and there's all the other infrastructure associated with railways at a railway station. That's why it's a railway station, not a train station. If this was a train museum, or train and tram, but if it was a train museum, there wouldn't be that ticket barrier, there wouldn't be the doors, there wouldn't be the uniforms. So, you know, it's, well, it's a transport museum in general, but that's why, you know, that's why that term is wrong. Um, say train station, this isn't a train museum, it's a rail, um, rail and transport museum. As we come up here, we find another uh, metro train. Now this is very typically like uh, you get in Finland, see the corrugated um, sides of the train. You'll see, I've seen some of the trains at the main railway station have these corrugated sides. I think we can go in. It's been cut in half the forecarriage, only half that's been preserved, but better than none of it being preserved. I might be wrong, but I think there might be some similar ones still in service. I saw an older one crossing the bridge earlier. When I go to cities like this, I tend to um, concentrate. I, I tend to concentrate on the trams. I'll use the metros to get me to the trams. So to get here, I went to the end of Metro Line 13, but um, trams are my sort of main interest. Metros come second. Get a great view here over the museum. See the tops. You can see the pantographs on the trams. This bus, we can't quite go in, but we can have a look here. So you see now we've got to the left-hand drive era. This bus is left-hand drive, and that's inside it. You can't smell this because you're watching, but the smell never changes. I love the, the vintage bus smell. We've got another, I think this is a trolley bus. Yeah, look, steering wheel here, steering wheel there. So that one, this trolley bus is right-hand drive. That's left-hand drive. I'm not 100% sure it's possible that the trolley bus is ended at the same time as the trams when they switched from over, you know, to driving on the other side of the road. We've got here. Um, you, you know when you get that feeling you're being watched? It's kind of how I feel at the moment. Um, well, I'm <laughs> breaking the fourth wall here. I'm being watched. I was being watched then, and hopefully I'm being watched now. Hopefully someone's watching this video. Uh, but yeah, so that's adding to the point of it's not just a train museum. I've not yet seen any other museum preserve CCTV cameras, but I think that's great that they have. Let's have a wander around. So the museum is located on four floors. It's not a small museum. We've got lockers. 
little um, children's corner there with books, lockers there. There's the back of Trolleybus 96. If we go through into here, and this is all about, I think, the Trolleybus era. So there you go, look, there's a picture there. I think I recognise that bridge. I think I walked under that this morning. So this is all about the Trolleybuses. You can see the ticket. Oh, we, we can go in. We can go into this Trolleybus. So this is the interior of a Swedish Trolleybus. There is one town in Sweden today that does have trolley buses. Um, the name's on screen now. Very small town, I'm gonna to have to go there one day, it looks quite exciting. So you can ride a trolley bus in Sweden. And I'm um, not too sure what that is. Let's have a look. Oh, I see, it's for, um, I understand, it, it like cleans the carbon monoxide. So yeah, perhaps look, the exhaust of the bus would go in there and somehow it cleaned the bus. I just saw on that video a picture of a bus pulling one. I think that's what it was. If you're watching and I'm incorrect, I'm sure you'll tell me. Let's now go up to the third floor. So what else we can find. I think we might find a few more trams. So yeah, trolley buses, buses and metros. Um, oh, and now we come to the, this is the nautical themed part of the museum. Of course, Stockholm is located on different islands, so boats are very much a part of Stockholm's transport. Most of the fjords are frozen at the moment. I have seen a few boats. Look at that. That's model split apart so you can see inside. So here we can see the various ferries. I'm not so into boats, although it's becoming a bit of a joke. When I got up to Scotland, I've started taking down the names of the ferries because I think well there's not that many and I've seen nearly all the trains in Scotland so it's like something else to, but I'm not going to start taking down boat numbers not here anyway uh, what else have we got let's go around so get fantastic views wherever you look over the museum we can make our way around to the very top floor I'm probably going to go down and have a coffee as promised I will have to have a ride on the miniature train and um, that will probably, without me really thinking about it, start a Miniature Railway Europe. You may watch my Miniature Railway Britain series, might start a Miniature Railway Europe series. Well look, if you feel like you're walking around a museum and you want to sit down, you can sit on an old metro seat, the brown maquette. It'd be quite fun if I was going somewhere. That's another view. Got the, um, the trans, the metro, the Miniature Metro. Around it. I can see down the other end some some very old trams. Um, I'll tell you why I think they're very old in a second. Because let's wait for the right moment to reveal this. The reason why I'm saying they're old. So down there, as I said, they're all electric. The trams. You can see the pantographs quite obviously. The reason this tram I'm saying is probably the oldest one in here. It's got a horse on the front, so it's a horse-drawn tram. I like horse-drawn trams in some way. It's a bit of a debate when you get one for haulage. Obviously you can't really count the horse because it's not always the same horse that pulls number 12. So I would just say I've travelled on number 12. This is a really, it's obviously a very small tram. Horses obviously couldn't pull the bigger trams. Um, but you know, they worked really hard. The horses that would pull the trams you see inside there. Looking out the window. If you can see much where we started down there, a little bit dull. Now this thing, this is fun, it's like a toast track. It's not a tram, it's, it's a bus. So in the summer, because obviously you wouldn't probably want to ride on that today, it's a bit cold, but in the summer, you know, they have warmish summers, you could ride on this, um, this little horse-drawn bus number 22. Now I think this is also, this is not a toast track. It's got, you know, um, longitudinal seating inside. Stockholm Central Omnibus Line. And yeah, it's horse drawn, and there's an old horse and carriage. We're going to walk round here now. We're going to go up to the top floor, and uh, we'll see what we can find up there. What's this? What's this? There's uh, various, you've got some clocks here from different eras. Um, yeah, here's some clocks. So it's all, all really quite interesting. Yeah, all the clocks of the transport around. 
It's all quite exciting. Yeah. So that's it's all quite good now. There's something here. Do this for a bit of fun. It says, can you be faster than public transport? So go have a look at this. It says, you push the button, wait for the green light go, and then you check your result on the screen by the finish line. So yeah, if you look there, there's a red light. If I press this green button, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to run. So as soon as the light goes green. Clora, Fadia, go! Right. Am I doing this faster than public transport? I don't know. It's not often I go rushing around in museums. Get to here. Right, okay, I was going at 12 to 16 kilometers an hour. That is pretty cool. So I must be going about the speed of a tram. That was, yeah, a bit random. Um, I feel puffed out now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this bit here. I'm gonna go up to the top floor and we'll see what we can find in, in the final part of this video. So here we are, we're on the top floor, we're in the loft, and this floor tells the story, the evolution of public transport in Stockholm. Apparently there's filing cabinets here, and in one of the drawers here, there's a, a piece of paper from the 1960s showing you what they predicted transport in Stockholm would be like in the year 2000. Have a look. So while the metro has expanded, um, we don't have hover buses, or sort of shows helicopters, ferries we have. So it has, it's developed. The metro is being extended as we speak. Tram lines are being extended as we speak. It's interesting here on this board, it shows a picture of a steam tram. So replacing the horse drawn trams actually had some steam trams and they were better in that they could go faster, they could climb hills. They weren't, you know, so well, they weren't stressed at all on the horses because the horse wasn't there. There's a good map here. This gives you an idea. What I'm saying about Stockholm being on Ireland. So this is the city center around here we're up here there's a line a tram line down here and it, i had to go on a replacement bus i went on it this morning i had to go on a replacement bus to about here because they've rebuilt the bridge so i took the metro to here rockstein i might be saying that wrong i probably am so that's where we currently are Ooh, there's a hole in the floor there and i can just see a roof of a metro train below there's a good map here now as for stockholm and its public transport so yeah if you look here these are the newest metro trains you see. It's public transport. I understand for the size of the city, it's got the most dense metro system anywhere, possibly in the world. See, what well, looks like quite a big map. So this is where we are. We're here. So I did this line here, very scenic um, tram line, but has more of a light rail feel. I had to go on the bus between here and here because it's on another island. They've rebuilt the bridge. There's this tram line here. This is the only real bit of Stockholm's original trams Street running tramways, that's currently closed, so I haven't had a, a ride on that. Yesterday I did route, I filmed all of Route 30, driver's eye view, all the way around here. That was really good fun. And then there's a short Route 31, which will be extended round to here. The other really charming tram route is from Alvik, is this one here. It's a really nice, it's locally known as Tolvan. So that's, if you go to Stockholm, a lot of the tram, the, the, the metro, is above ground so you can have some really nice rides so it's really good fun look at this there's a boat here um, so you, you can actually if you want to you can dress up i noticed downstairs there was a smaller boat I didn't feature that in the video there were children they'd all got little um, life jackets on there's a horse yes yeah, let's say stockholm had plenty of horses for its public transport it demonstrates what i was saying horses were not very happy around scarp hills they couldn't really pull them, so that's where steam trams came in. It's interesting here that there's a picture of Stockholm in 1901, and we can move to 2020. So it's got some... That's always interesting to see. We're going to walk through... I always love past and present, seeing how something was, how it is now. We get to here. Here we have look, a model of a steam tram. Have a look. Now what it's saying, there's been a bit of an accident, there's a mess on the road. The steam tram has frightened a horse, the horse has bolted and yeah, everything has fallen out the back of the horse and cart. And um, that's the driver of the steam tram pretty much saying, well, 
Yeah, it's not my fault. So that's quite interesting. Here we have, it's like, um, I think it's the side of a boat. Because if we go inside, there's a, a lady there. She's a, a passenger. Yeah, that's a passenger. I think you can listen to a commentary. Um, and there, that's the steam engine that a boat would have used. We go out here, some quite interesting things. Look, we've got a building, a giant model of a building. Look, it's like the same size as me. It's taller than me. You can see the, I love it. It's all made of wood. It's really, it's a really nice model. Like the scaffolding, it's like the building itself isn't actually that interesting, but the scaffolding is a work of art in itself with all the, all the stairs going down. Now here, this is where we move on to the electric here. See this interesting looking vehicle. It's got a bow collector. See the two gentlemen in their top hats? They're sort of looking up in amazement. They've never seen anything like it before. So that's what they're doing. It's like, what's this? It's a, we've never seen this. So that's quite interesting. Well, so we've got some models there of some of the trams. So I understand they're the trams that ran um, into the tunnels. Oh, look, this is fun. I'm stepping into a tram. It's like a simulator. Probably just as well it's not showing the whole route because I probably would just stand here all day. I'll just let you see a little bit more. Yeah, I'd love I'd love to see that whole film. Come out here though, I've got something. Looks like a fairly dark cabinet. I'm gonna press this button. And it's coming to light. It's daylight and we have a rather nice model tramway. There is a tram there. I don't know if it's gonna go or not. It'd be nice if it did. Um but I'm not sure. So you can we can have a look at the model. So you've got the tram depot here. I'm running along, sort of semi-rural. I think the windmill's a bit out of scale, but then you get that. Passing some building work. There's a routes coming off here, tram junction. Passing more buildings here. You can see inside, see the sewing machine, the lady looking out the window. And if you look through this hole here, you can see the end of the tram line. Or at least I thought you could. We're gonna walk through into here now, get the engines. Of our buses so let's see it's showing you the pistons how bus engines would have worked and you've yeah, been down there various different types of buses and here we have another model of this is what i was saying about when the trams sort of crossed over into metro it looks like this is the end of a metro line i think if i can do the same thing i am put the light on so you can see it a bit better but it seems a bit of a, i don't know if they're supposed to go around it seems a little slightly disappointing they're not going around but Looks like so this was the end, you can see it's like a whole loop. I get the ends of tram loops, and if you look here, you can see an underground station. Oh, it'd have been really fun to have watched the trams go around, but or trains, whatever they are, metro. But yeah, perhaps we won't today. Give you a look out the window, see the snow outside. So I think that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. So there's one other thing. Front, more front to metro trains. See this metro train cab here. If we go inside there, I've spotted something, something else quite fun. Look at this. It's got a simulator. Again, I'm not sure if they're showing the whole route, but yeah, we has just skipped forward. We're just coming into a station. So I could watch that all day if it was the whole film. So thank you very much for watching. If you're in Stockholm, do come and visit this museum. It's, it's at the end of Metro Line 13. Thank you very much. Please feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.